Kia ora, ko Kelly toko ingoa. Uh, my name is Kelly. Um, I am a registered nurse that is going to do some teaching with you about the importance of the Treaty of Waitangi, uh, some of New Zealand's history and how this is important um, in changing some of the health outcomes that Māori people experience in New Zealand. Uh, Māori people traditionally have uh, poorer health outcomes uh, in New Zealand than non Māori people and so we are directed by Nursing Council um, to make sure that we uh, that we do everything that we can to um, play our role in, in how to change that. So this is a short um, introduction video about um, some of the history um, in New Zealand um, that led to the signing of Te Treaty of Waitangi. It is um, about the Declaration of Independence. Uh, just while you're learning uh, these things um, in this module, maybe you could think about how the history of New Zealand has affected Māori health outcomes. So the Declaration of Independence is an international declaration that recognises the sovereignty of the independent tribes of New Zealand. It was signed on the 28th of October in 1835 and it was the forerunner of the Treaty of Waitangi. Um, one of the outcomes of this uh, declaration was that it has a flag that symbolises tribal rights and um, to, enable it, to enable New Zealand to trade as an independent nation. Uh, it has been ignored by successive governments and the education system uh, and it was witnessed by the Crown resident who was James Busby at the time. So what happened in New Zealand's history was that um, there were several hundred settlers from New Zealand that had come here. Uh, the, the Crown had sent um, a representative of the Crown and his name was James Busby. Uh, the New Zealand chiefs wanted to start trading um, some of their timber and um, some of their products that they had in New Zealand. They wanted to start trading that with um, Australia and um, however they weren't able to really do that because they had no um, flag to sail on their ships and um, back in 1835 in order to trade you needed to um, sail under a flag. So they got together um, and uh, the, the chiefs got together um, under the guidance of James Busby and um, made this Declaration of Independence which, which recognised that New Zealand became its own nation and that um, it was able to trade with others. Um, so there were two versions of the Declaration of Independence. One was in Māori and one was in English. Uh, it, another significant reason why the chiefs wanted a Declaration of Independence is because there were some other competing interests. Um, there wasn't just the Britons that were um, interested in coming to live and, and work in New Zealand. It was actually uh, also there were some other, other countries such as the French wanting to come and claim New Zealand as a new territory. And by signing this declaration, the chiefs uh, were trying to say that it was already um, there was already sovereignty there by the chiefs. It was uh, not up for for other people to come and take. So this is the English translation of the Māori uh, version um, and so we see here the date is the 28th October 1835. Um, so all sovereign power and authority within the territories of the United Tribes of New Zealand is hereby declared to reside entirely and exclusively in the hereditary, hereditary chiefs and heads of tribes in their collective capacity, who also declare they will not permit any legislative authority separate from the self, themselves in their collective capacity capacity nor the function of any government to be exercised within the said territories unless by persons appointed by them and acting under the authority of laws 
regularly enacted by them in Congress assembled. So basically what that is saying is that um, the chiefs were given the, the authority over, over the land um, and they weren't able to give it to anyone else unless there was, um, there was agreement uh, collectively. Um, another part of it was the hereditary chiefs and heads of tribes agree to meet in Congress at Waitangi in autumn each year for the purpose of framing laws for the dispensation of justice, the preservation, preservation of peace and, and good order and the regulation of trade. They also cordially invite the southern tribes to lay aside their private animosities and to consult the safety and welfare of our common country by joining the Confederation of the United Tribes. So they were this this group uh, of northern tri uh, of northern chiefs were wanting to uh, include the 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 chiefs and the and the tribes from the rest of New Zealand to for a common goal. Um, and the last part was about that they all agree um, to send a copy of the declaration to His Majesty the King of England, thank him for his, for his acknowledgement of their flag, in return for friendship and protection that they have shown and prepared to show to such of his subjects as have settled in their country or resorted to its shores for the purposes of trade. They entreat that he will continue to be the parent of the infant state to protect it from all attempts upon its independence. Agreed to in its entirety on this day, the 28th of October, in the, Brita, in the presence of his Britannic Majesty's resident. So um, they that part is basically just saying that... Um, that they wanted, you know, the King of England to still have um, some ability to um, look after the British settlers that were already in New Zealand that had come there for the purposes of trade. And that's the end of this video. Uh, if we would like to move on to the next one.